just got myself a little piece of metal and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what how I'm just going to show you how I fixed the fender on Doug's car uh, I was going to do it without Jolene knowing but she said dad make a video so anyways here we are anyways I'm going to come over here just grab a little piece of metal um, I'm going to put it in the hole of the fender I've got two screw holes here for the for a mirror you can see how how it's sanded how shiny it is around the top of the hole that hole that hole that needs to be punched down a little bit and then filled in with the welder that's what it needs to be done it needs to be knocked down a little bit because if it's up in the air if you flood it this part of the fender out that would be your highest part and it, that would keep showing if you know what i'm trying to tell you on the antenna here it's got a hole here and i'm just going to take this little piece of metal and just eye it up and make my own and guess like I always do and whatever don't look good when I cut it I'll uh, adjust it with the shear over there so I'm guessing uh, I'm just gonna put that in there like that I'm gonna come over here I got the other Beverly shear sitting down in there I should spray that bad boy and get her I should spray that bad boy not right this second but I'm gonna spray that with some penetrant, with some crown, and, and uh, free that bad boy up. That, and this, re this little thing right here is what that is good for. Making small pieces. chop it off yet I want to keep holding it that way makes it better for me just have to turn it all the way around that's all keep in mind that I want this piece to fit inside the hole I don't want it to sit on top of the hole and the reason being is I don't want it to stand up to be the highest point so I want it to sit down inside the hole if I can there's what I have. I'm just going to take a pair, and, pair of these vice grips and I will knock it down around on the edges a little bit, just smooth it off a little bit with a grinder or a flapper wheel, which is this. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go this way. I'm going to use these glasses in case I can't find my other ones. I'm just going to smoothen that up on the edges so I can fit it down inside the hole. So the, I guess the, my object of the game is just to plug the holes, but I do not want the highest part of the ocean floor to be that spot because when I put some fill on it, I, do, I want to cover it. Um, and, and to have it high, I would not be able to cover the hole. So that's what I'm going to try to do, or that's what I am going to do. <laughs> sharp points off it. There's always more to it than meets the eye, is there not? There's always more to it. Even craft dinner takes time. Doesn't it, baby? Takes time, doesn't it? Get like the water boil, you know, that sort of stuff. Uh, I'm gonna just run this down here and turn this around. Bum, bum, bum. If I ever offend anybody, I don't mean to. I just think it's good to laugh. I think it's good to laugh. I really do. I think it's good to laugh at some things. It's good to laugh. I've got no real place to hook on this, I see. I'm just going to lay the ground on, on the car itself. Just lay it on the fender as long as it touches. Um, I'm also going to... 
What am I going to now? I'm going to get some air. What I'm going to use the air for is, as soon as I do some welding on that, um, as soon as I do some welding on that, there's going to be heat. And I do not want to distort it whatsoever, you know. It's on top of the fender. I don't want to distort it. So what I'm going to do is, what I always do, I always blow. After I weld it, I'll flip my helmet up and I'll cool it off. And that's what I'll do. I just want to get the air gun that doesn't leak so much. That's good for me. Put my gun on my hip there. I need my glasses before I do that. I need my glasses. The ones that I can see with. Them little ones. Where'd we hide them bad boys at? It's been a while. I know we bought some new ones. I know that. The wooden stump. Nope. <gasps> what did I do with those? I can do it without my glasses, I guess. I understand that, but they're down in the truck. I'm going to go grab them. I guess you'll have to film the outside, show them what the outside looks like. Looks, it's some nice outside. It's beautiful outside. I'll be right back. Hold on. Hold on. They won't recognize me if new glasses. Who would ever buy another car when you got something like that sitting there, eh? Nice out, eh? Beautiful. Alrighty. Got my glasses on, helmet on. Put my air in my pocket. Ground is on. I'm going. I gotta. I'm gonna tack this piece in, I guess, first. You know. What I'm gonna do is. I'm gonna turn this upside down. I know that right now. Wherever it makes a mark or sticks to, just take the 80 grit and we'll take it off after that. I'm just going to tack this on. Hope it stays on. Hope it stays on. Probably not. Watch your eyes for a sec, too. Huh? Ah, I can't keep falling down on me. Eh, I think we got her now. Now just hold down this side. Probably should have a hammer under these vice grips though. Just gonna hold it down like that. I'm gonna put the air in it. Sometimes, sometimes, the gear, you're, sometimes, like that helmet coming back down. <laughs> I gotta get my, get my, uh, get my hammer and forget about that helmet. Anyways. So I've got that sort of, I got it in place and sorted, but it's up here on this side a little bit. I might as well get it in place before I do the next hack on it. That just took it down a little bit. Little gap there, does not matter, does not matter. It's nice and flush, not hot at all. We'll just take our time and daub that in there. Take our time and daub that in there. And then uh, we'll go from there. I want to keep that as cool as possible.
Now. Trying to knock it inward somewhat. Make sure I got penetration. Trust. I have trust. No problem, see? No, no, no heat whatsoever. What I'm going to do here now is I've got them flush all the way around. <clears throat> Instead of trying to start in a new, new spot and trying to hold that down in place, I think it's pretty well got it. So what I'm going to do where the gap is, I'll just every time I put a piece on, I'll start on the side of this chunk of weld here and maybe go this way and maybe I'll bring this one this way. Who knows? But I'll start it on where the meat is and start, instead of trying to build back, bridge a new gap. You know what I'm trying to say. So what I did is I put a put a spot of weld on the side of every piece, every weld that I've already had there. That way, there I do not have to bridge that gap anymore. It's the meat's there, and I just have to work off of that. There. I wonder if Doug would like a set of wings on the back, back of this bad boy. We got a set of wings out there, haven't we? Huh? We got a set of wings out there, Doug. Just build off the other ones, that's all I did. Cool. Awesome. Just gonna go here and do it again. There, so I And the object is not to get it hot, you know, don't get it hot. But we want penetration also, and there's a fine line. Now, as you, as you watch me weld this in, I have not done other than one dot at a time. And when I'm doing it, I'm holding it approximately that far away. I am making sure my wire's at where I want it to be before I pull the trigger. And it's almost the, the length of one, two, you should have penetration on this. Um, I've got the welder set on C, so I'm on three quarters of the temperature the heat I guess and the, my wire my wire speed is six and that's what I'm burning it at. I find on the C that it's a little hotter for the sheet metal and I like I like to get in and get out very quickly on it get the air on it and uh, that's the way I like to do it I find with the B sometimes you have to wait a little bit longer I'm impatient sometimes
try to finish this up. Whoop, burnt a hole. So this is, this, is a, this is a good time to think about it for a second. I'm not going to jump right back in the hole. I'm going to put the wire on where the meat is. You know, I'm not going to jump up in here. Well, I would never do that. I want to jump over here where the meat is. And that's what I'm going to do. And then I get the puddle to lay in that hole. So what I've done is I've got some meat going there, got some heat going, and then ro rolled it over inside the, in the hole. That's good. Feels good. I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to get this helmet off my head because it is squeezing my fat head. Alrighty. You like my glasses? Don't even recognize me, do you, baby? Get a little tortoise shell down the bottom. Got them veneered at Jeff's place. Got them veneered. Uh, now, I've got to take this off. I'm going to take it off with, I like the flapper wheel myself because it's, it's so small that the flapper wheel do a nice job on it. I'm just going to go in here for a minute. I've got the, the Pepsi bench plugged up a little bit. Hmm, there's flapper wheel right there. That's what I use the, the Pepsi contain, the thing for. And it does a fine job, it does a fine job. Do any extension cord that's behind you, baby. And what we'll do is we'll take it right to, we'll take it right ready for primer. What we'll do, we'll put a little body fill on it and take it right till it's ready for primer. Just so you can see and we all can see together. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to just hit the weld. I don't want to hit the other, the, the other metal whatsoever. I have nothing against it. I just don't want to hit it like, you know, I do not want to inter take any more metal off. Windshield's taped off, we're okay. If not, you have to tape it off with sparks. Just because I have that welded up on the top side does not mean, like as I look at it, I don't see any pinholes or anything, does not mean there's not a pinhole in it, it's just like a gas tank. But as you weld something up like that, and you weld those two holes up like that, that's fine. But in, in all actual fact, you should, after you're done, go underneath that fender and hit some undercoating on the, on the inside of that where that is fixed. You definitely should. And if you don't, um, it, it can come off. It can, there's, there's no reason why it could not. But uh, here, in, here, in, here in Canada, we have winters, and we always try to do that. What I'll do with that next, I'm going to my, my trusty little box of goodies, and I'll just get the drill just to clean it off a little bit more. Just a little bit more.
I do not mind. I do not mind the weld showing it all. Like I could grind it off more and more and more and try to make like it never happened, but uh, that's not what I'm going for. I'm going for the fix because when I grind it off anyways, I still have to put fill on it no matter what I make it look like. If you know what I'm trying to tell you, I want that to come down a little bit more. I can feel it. So we're going to put a little bit of, I always generally put a little bit of glass on it first. It's such a little, it's such a little spot that I don't think I really um, need glass on it. If you know what I'm saying, it's such a small area. I don't think glass would do me much. Glass would do me any good at all, to be honest with you. Mini fiber. I got some Z-grip for what it's going to take. Um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go about it this way. Bum, 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 bum. I want a little thing to mix that up on. Doesn't matter what it is. No, not mix it up on that side. Mix it up on that side. I grab anything to mix fill on. Is there? Yeah. As you can tell, I'll grab anything. Don't really know if I need that much, but as always, I like to have more than I need. Oh, I dropped that in there. I like to have more than I need when it comes to filling something like that out. Um, if I do not have the product on there, I cannot, I cannot do the job. Just same as when I put the primer on. I cannot feather that paint out if I do not put the primer on. Supper. So I'll cover it over there. See what happens. There's filler on the on the front side of the repair. I'm going to try to cover a little bit of that too and try to get it all at once. Here we go. Put more on than I need. Stretch it out. I got to stretch it out because if I don't stretch it out, I won't. I will not be able to. I might as well do this too. It's got fill on it. It's hard to believe for two two uh, screw holes, but let's face it, that de that disrupts the bottom of the <laughs> the ocean floor, so it has to be dealt with. Hmm. Trying to get that built up there. trying to get that edge going up there. As long as I fill that up, it's got a little bit of a scallop in it. So if I fill, and if, I know if I fill it up, then I should have enough there. That's what I'm hoping for as I run that down there. Yeah, so I tried it from this edge on this fender, kind of got a roll, got a roll in. So I just tried to fill that up all the way so I can make that nice and straight for that and a little bit of fill that's there together. I didn't want to get into this fill and then get into this fill and make them feel awkward together. Sometimes it feels nice to just be one person, not two people. So I got one person going on here and I'd be able to stand it off straight and flatten this off at the same time. So we'll just leave it like that. We'll leave it like that. We'll come over here and we'll throw this, doesn't matter. It's a plate that was going in the garbage anyways. And I pick up a rag that I had on the floor or for a headband or whatever, and I wipe it off, use everything that I have in the shop to do what I have to do. Uh, I just wait for that to heal, I guess.
Oh, sorry. Uh, I, I, good job, Jolene. She's not only filming, she's producing. Just, I, I know I have the mic on some, some, sometimes. She can't, you can't hear her. Sometimes you can. Um, right now, she asked me what am I going to sand it with. Well, when I see it there like this, it's pretty, it looks pretty good. It's not like we're... It looks pretty good. I, I don't want to get into it with a really rough, rough grit. I may take and take a piece of 40 grit to start with, generally like always. I might knock off just the heads of it, and then I would take a block with a 80 grit on it and probably do it with an 80 grit, and then it'd be ready for primer. So that's basically what I do. I will not, some, when, when you're with, with a 40 grit, and, you're, and if you're sanding this, sometimes it works only just a little tiny bit. It'll scroll through your body fill, and then you're in trouble. You're, you've got a big scratch, and you're down to your body fill, and it, you've ruined what you've just done. So if I use the 40 grit, it'll just be just to knock off the edges of the body fill and that, and then I'll take it off with the 80 grit, try to make it what it's supposed to look like. Reason being is because it's close where it's at right now. I do not want to disturb it by hitting it with too strong of a grit and going right to the bare metal. And sometimes the 40 grit will do that. So I, I'm going to go very easy on that. I might just do it with an 80. Um, generally, um, yeah, I might even run it off with the, with the DA. I'll show you how I do that right quick. And I'll buzz that off. If we give it a little bit of time. With the DA, I can run that off and less than a minute, I suppose. Just, it's just the time to wait to see it. Watch it heal. So as it heals, I'm just going to watch it. I might as well get this ready. How's that? Because I'm, I'm going to do it with this piece right here. And I'll show you how I'm going to do it with this. I'm going to, it's electric, electric DA. I, you know, I, I love these things because they do not shut down for power. Sometimes the barons get done. But I will use it just like a block. If you know what I'm trying to tell you, I'm going to use it just like a block. Also, um, as I'm doing this, it might be also good if I run a piece of tape from, this, from the top line here to this line here to, to know where to sand to, to get that line straight. And that comes within time. Like I, I can do that on the primer stage if I want to. And everything that you do, you just try to make it a little bit better than you did last time. Or just try to straighten. Like I drew the circle for the top there. Well, I didn't get it quite right when I drew it the first time, so I just add a little bit to it or take a little bit to it from it. And then I remember my brain when I go over and cut it off, you know, I can take a little bit more off or a little bit more on or whatever. You just kind of, you have to keep focused, I guess, on what the job is at hand. And uh, my job at hand, it's hard to say, but was to, that thing's ready and I'm not. Um, my job was to go over there and cut it. We're getting close. We're getting very close. Bear with us, bear with us, bear with us. Just got to fix that before we do any more. I got to cut the doors open and take the door handles off or look at them. They don't want me to take the door handles off, but I want to take the door handles off. That's what I want to do because it would, it would make a better job for me to paint it and, and having the feathering going on there. Yeah. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, we'll see, we'll see probably in the next day or so. When we pull the tape off this, we've got tape on the, on the pinstripe and the gray down below. God be willing, and God be good to us. Nothing will come off. And that's where I'm at. Because I'm thinking that the same problem was on, the, if it's the same car, if it's the same car, I'm thinking the same problem was, if you know what I'm trying to say. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. And sometimes that's the predicament you get into, right? You just never know. You know, Doug thought he was going to polish her back up and, you know, have it all good. He did exactly what I did on the, on the engine. Wished and prayed, didn't he, baby? Huh? He did the wished and prayed, exact same as I did. And that's good to do. I mean, let's face it, it's good to do. Instead of just running and going and spending a bunch of money, you've got to, you've got to try to do it yourself. Why would you not? Or, you know, if you're interested, if you're not interested, and yeah, if you're not interested... Pass her up and give someone a good job. It's coming. I'll show you like what I what I what I mean here. 
what I can do. I'm not going to hit it with 40 grit. It's too, it's too close to the metal for me to ruin it and have to put it back on. So this is what you could do for, for making our line straight on the top. We'll just take a piece of tape. We'll run it along here, and we'll go right with our door. And then and that there, and it tells me that I can sand up at least that far. I want to come look at it from your way in case I got a real crooked. Well, I sort of do a little bit. I sort of do a little bit. This car goes like this on the side, all the way down. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, we'll go with that for now. That, that way there, I can play with the line after. You can see I got a little bit of line. I just play with that. Here we go. Holding it flat. I'm not doing anything. Running it like a block. Back and forth. Up and down and around. You do the exact same thing with your square block. You can picture it. You can, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm going to go easy. See what went on there? Got a little bit off. Got a little bit off. Don't want that. Don't want that going on yet. Don't want that going on yet. Just that it's soft, that's why. I'm, I'm at it a little quick. Now, this here, I'm just going to take this. Run it flat on the whole thing. But the body filler is soft, so it doesn't really matter. It's kind of working good together. Not a bad line. Not a bad line. I'm going to take a piece of paper. We'll just try to make it look like something so we can primer it and then really make it look like something. That's basically what I'm going to do. Just trying to feather the edges off. I'm pushing away. I'm trying to feather that fill off down into that fender. It's straight because I ran that feather edge along it straight, and when I put my fill on, it was straight. And before I put the fill on it, the fender was straight. So what I'm really doing is just trying to cover this one spot that's been welded, and I'm trying to feather it out the best I can for the best repair. So you cannot tell. That's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to fix it so you cannot tell. And I guess this is my full we full proof way of, of not letting you see it is to cover it with a flood and not even let you see the floor. That's how I like to do it. On the side here, we're just gonna... And you gotta watch, this, this filler, if the metal was not conditioned the way that we had it, this filler would be probably pulling off this fender and I'll tell you why, because I'm at it so early. You know, I waited a little longer, it would, have, it really would have sucked really good. But where I'm at it so quick and it's hanging on, just tells me how well the fender is prepped to hold filler. That's what it tells me. You know, that wasn't very long. And we're sanding it. And we're sanding it with an 80 grit, and it'll be primed after. Sand it with an 80 grit.
I'm going to say that I'm going to leave that for primer to tell me the rest. And that's what I like to use primer for. Tell me what's what's left and what's. I can move I can move this line either over. I can move it back and forth just the way I sand. If I want to sand on this side and lean a little bit, line will go over. If I want to go on this side and sand it and bring it over, I can bring the line back over. Exact same thing with primer. But I'm going to leave it like that. And that's the fix for the fender. Um, we've welded two holes in it where the mirror was, and we welded the hole for the antenna. And then we put a little mud on it to flatten it out. I think what we'll see, if you, if you come here real close, I think what you'll see is the edge of the ocean floor, which is that piece that we put in, is right there. So that tells you how thin that is. That's good. I'm happy with it. And uh, whatever needs to be fixed after we prime, that's what we see after we prime it. But uh, that's how I fix the fender on Doug's car. You've seen it just like I've seen it. And it went fairly good, I guess. But now some of the, the time I'm going to take is to clean the mess up, clean all my tools up. Then everything has to be put back. Sometimes I leave them all over the place. That's sometimes how you gain time, I guess, or I'm figuring in my brain. When I leave the tools all out, I figure I'm coming back to work. I'm going to use them tomorrow morning. And I might as well leave them there. And uh, that's how you save some time sometimes, right? Um, other times when you don't don't clean up and you're done the job and you don't need them that means you're going looking for them so there's a time and a place to clean up the tools but uh, i don't think i'm going to be doing any more grinding or welding on the car anymore that's that's it for that sort of stuff and that's how it rolls always have the air hose with you if you want to do a good job if you're looking at doing a good job on welding your car up you should always have the air hose with you just to keep the heat the heat down and uh, it's not nothing that is spectacular but it's just common sense to have that cool air there to knock the heat down in your fender and that's why you know I've always had a hard time hard time thinking about letting a cars because I always think I'm thinking about the heat it's like wow I don't I don't want to use all that heat I just I don't um, I know what heat does um, it's it's good and it's in its in its position, but when you're, you know, trying to make something, heat can really mess you up. Heat can mess you up. Very much it can, and uh, that's what I, that's what I'm generally scared of. That's why I carry the hose with me, because I I do not want any of Doug's metal going out of shape. All it does is cause more work, more labor, um, confusion, and uh, why would you warp it when you didn't have to? That's what I look at that. Why would you warp it when you don't have to? Uh, there's a certain way to weld on the car, and I keep it that way. No more than four tacks at a time when you're welding sheet metal on a car and get that air hose on it. If you get good at it, you get quick and it does not matter, but at least you're not distorting, distorting all your metal work that you're doing. I don't know. When you build a car, Man, the heat, if you just held on to something and then watch someone weld the other end, how much it moves. It's crazy how much things move with heat. And uh, I would too if someone splashed me with something hot. You want to see me run? Huh? Listen, I got a, went into a fire one time and picked up a Frisbee. I was going to save it. It was melting and it got on my finger. You can tattooed over there now, but it burnt me so good it, it yeah, it branded me. Uh, that little that little frisbee was some hot when I grabbed it. Wow. But anyways, them the good old days. I learned not to grab hot frisbees. That's what I learned that day. And how fast I can run. <laughs> there you go. So we're moving along. We're going. You know, we have this stuff has to be done. And I want to do that before we get start going with the primer on it. That had to be done. So as we keep going, now we're going to have to. We're going to have to clean the inside of this place out, which is another big job. But hey, that's what we're here for. And a baby. That's what we're here for. We're happy to be. I'm going to finish that thing. I'm going to, when it comes time, I'll see if I can get the old sandblast, give it a splash on the inside, get it cleaned up, primed, and give it back to him. i got one more coat of filler to put on it, but whatever. So we're going to clean this all up yet. You know what I mean? I still, we still got the 40 in here on the skates. I want to clean this out a little bit, blow it out. Put some water on the walls, splash Doug's car with some paint. And that's not all I want to splash with paint. There's a, probably a few other things I'd like to splash too, and we'll see what happens. I wouldn't mind finishing the fountain and getting that out of here.
I'm, man, I'm, I'm going to paint some stuff and move some stuff. <laughs> Alrighty, if you're fixing your fender or fixing a little tiny spot on your car, make sure you contain it as small as you can. And do not let that metal warp by taking your time and using an air hose to cool it down. Uh, I don't know if you, if you like, who, whatever, but um, if you can tell your body man to go over and p repair that, and he welds it up, grinds it off, fills it up, he's done, come over, sir, I'm done. What's next? You'd be so happy. But if you get in over here and you warp the fender up, and then you've got to put mud on it three or four times, you know what goes on from there. Have a good day, everybody. Peace out.